Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Fratello Talks. I'm your host, Nacho, and this week I'm joined by my colleagues, RJ and Lex. And this week we're going to be discussing uh, things that make a watch worthwhile. Uh, we're going to be touching upon the topic of uh, wait lists and also limited editions, uh, amongst other things. Uh, but before we do that, let's see what's on the wrist, Lex. A limited is, uh, edition. Beneath that pink sleeve. Yeah, it's a limited edition. It's a Casio G-Shock uh, GWN5610NV. And the NV stands Ooh. for Navy. Oh, it's it's Navy okay. blue. I bought it in Tokyo. Very cool. Um, so it's a tough solar and uh, and all that. So it, it's... Uh, and a negative display. Right? Yeah, that's, and that actually sucks. <laughs> yeah. I can't get used to the... You're not alone in that opinion. Oh, yeah. It, but the thing is, it just... This watch looks better with a negative display. It does. It does. It, it matches really nicely. But it's... it's Yeah. It, if, functionality, it's not on point. Right. Okay, fair on enough. Point. And RJ, what is on your wrist today? I'm not wearing a limited edition, oh. although you might be uh, able to debate that. It's uh, the Omega Speedmaster Silver Snoopy uh, Award, the 50th anniversary edition. And uh, it's a sort of a limited edition, so it's not numbered. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, the yeah. production is limited. A limited right. production. And it's reference uh, 311.30.42.00.001.0010.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001
So I was, um, and I think if you're on the wait list for one, one month and then you get the call, you're still, ex you're, you're going to be ecstatic. But, and that's what I asked the guy and I didn't receive a, an answer, so I don't know. But if you're on a wait list for two years um, and then you get the call, mm -hmm. what do you do? Yeah, well, you answer the call, but then do you actually go to the boutique or, or you, are you already... Uh, uh, I mean, your is your attention span going to be uh, two years? I mean, anticipation is half the fun, but how long can you stretch anticipation? Exactly. That's, that's the thing. And at some point, your eye might begin to wander yeah. and you exactly. might begin yeah. to consider other options that are yeah. a little bit yeah. more. I mean, everybody will have a certain tolerance for how long they're willing mm -hmm. to wait. Some people might say, if I have to wait, I'm not in. I, I, I'm not interested. Uh, and other mm -hmm. people might say, "Hey, that's uh, waiting is uh, half of the fun, and, and playing that game with a with an AD is half the fun." We've heard this uh, stated before. I, I don't think any of us uh, particularly think that. Uh, I think we're okay yeah. with a reasonable waiting time. Exactly. But, but I, I don't mind waiting. So, uh, but there, there's a there's a certain limit, I would say. And I remember when I. Mm. ordered i think the first time i was uh exposed to this waitlist thing was when i ordered a linda verlin mm. oh my god three timer in 2009 mm -hmm. during basel world yeah i think it was one of the first mm -hmm. appointments uh, i had on in, uh, in basel world it was with them and then i saw the brown uh, uh three timer watch they had back in the day mm -hmm. and i ordered it straight away and that so that it was in march or april and then I think I received it in November. Wow. And I thought that was a stretch. That was a long wait. It was only 22 pieces. I ordered number 13, as always. Mm -hmm. And it was a long, long wait. And yeah. at some point, I was a bit over it. And I was not that excited anymore to to mm -hmm. to, to receive it or mm -hmm. get up. I can't mm -hmm. remember. Because you're you're over the the momentum is gone, and I enjoy to watch. That's uh, that, that's not yeah. the difference. And the same was with the with the Snoopy I'm wearing today. I think I ordered it on the first day on uh, October fifth, uh, twenty twenty, and I uh, received it uh, uh, much later. And a little bit of the excitement was gone, to be honest, because you see so many around you. We had it for review, so I was I already had yeah, seen yeah, it yeah, and yeah, tried yeah. it and so on. So you're not excited anymore as on that first day. And I think you're I, I'm willing to wait a little bit or a few months even, but at some point, it's too much. And I, then yeah. I just disconnect. And it that's also, also depends on the brand and the type of watch, I guess. Yeah, right? but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a full-on Speedmaster collector. Yeah, true. Yeah. So for me, that, that should not be really an issue. But I think for me, it's just, yeah, it needs to be a bit of fair play, yeah. it almost seems. And it's also the I'm, reason yeah. why I backed out from buying new Rolexes, because I also need to be on the wait list there. And I just... Mm. I don't enjoy that, and it just makes no sense to me. But uh, hypothetically, I have the uh, I have the the cash to burn on uh, any Patek I want. Mm -hmm. That I I don't want to be on the on a wait list no. for uh, for a three hand uh, Calatrava or a Nautilus. But if uh, if I order this uh, very uh, uh, grand complication uh, uh, mm -hmm. type, I don't know what what have you, and they will tell me, well, uh, Mr. Stolk, because that's how they roll at <laughs> yeah. Patek. They don't call me like yeah, I was they call say, me this Mr. Doesn't Stolk. Seem very hypothetical. Mm -hmm. This no, seems like no. a Thursday. Thursday and they evening. say, well, I'm sorry, but uh, we uh, we don't have the capacity to manufacture. You have to wait for uh, for three years. Mm. I think I could stretch that if it's it depends on the watch, attack, and it is a very uh, complicated yeah. uh, thingy. But the whole but a, a wait well, you, you for want a freehand. You want your Volkswagen Golf. Yeah, you want it next week. But and your Bugatti a Veyron, Ferrari or yeah. Bugatti. Okay, you can wait. A, a I was not the Veyron longer, anymore. The, uh, yeah. So it also depends a little bit on. Yeah, the watch. it, it I does. Agree. It does. Um, Do you think, uh, for example, because there's obviously there's waiting lists, right? So you go to an AD, you put your name down, but there's also this other thing, which is pre-ordering a watch and then waiting for it. That's that's kind yeah. of what the case is like with our limited editions, and we'll get to limited editions. Yeah, but in then a you second, at least then you have the security. Yeah, you, know? you have the security. You, so yeah. you have the allocation. Yeah. Um, and then that's not so much of an issue because yeah, you yeah. know it's coming and you have yeah. more or less an idea of when it's coming. It's like ordering something and there's shipping times just exactly. really long. But if I you mean, go to the AP house or the Omega boutique and you order yeah. a Royal Oak or a 321 or any Rolex, yeah. you're in the blind. You're yeah. in the dark. Yeah, you don't the, know. The, yeah. And that's annoying. Yeah. You're and in the hands of the, of the AD. And, and perhaps... Yeah, yeah. Perhaps for wonder. someone, because for example, right, like now you said you, you've spoken to people who say, okay, if you want to get a white delt Speedmaster... It's about a year, 
Yeah, wet. some some ADs. There's a difference between boutiques and uh, ADs. So boutiques have yeah. a bit of a preference for uh, Omega, and I think many brands work like this. Yeah. So they they will be there a bit quicker, but ADs they said oh could, could can be up to a year. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a well that's a time at least that's a that's a time frame or that's a yeah. but, but what about what about when you then you're in that position and you start seeing other people perhaps that you know that are local to you who start getting theirs and it, it could no, either, I know it's it could annoying to a bit of frustration or especially when you see people on Instagram who just got it from day one yeah. and stuff like that so it, I I, yeah. rem I remember when we did the Speedy Tuesday watches in 2017 and 2018 that mm -hmm. also took quite a bit and for a lot of people it was frustrating to see that others got it first and there was months in between but yeah that was then it's a limited edition, so it's short productions, yeah. and they don't do, produce them all at once. It goes in little batches at, uh, at Omega. But if they communicate, we have a watch that is just regular collection, mm -hmm. it should not take that long. And especially with Rolex, pushing yeah. out a million watches a year. Uh, yeah. And and the other problem I have, if it's all fair play, I don't mind it that much. Yeah, but it, but yeah. we all know that yeah, with it's ADs, not. it's not fair play. That's where I was heading to as well, especially knowing that that there could be some deals where suddenly, uh, okay, you're on the waiting list, it's a year, and then some guy no, comes along and okay. he, he picks up uh, something else and he buys another watch and maybe yeah. he buys some jewelry and then suddenly... But uh, we also know that the gray market dealers, they buy... They don't produce the watches themselves, right? So the gray market <laughs> watches come from somewhere, let that be clear. So they come from ADs, not from boutiques. They come from ADs. So if you're on a wait list for a Rolex, I don't know what, a Submariner, and you wait for a long time. But meanwhile, a gray market dealer comes to the same AD yeah, and they said, hey, true. I want to steal a Submariner and I will take all your IWCs as well. Yeah, You will get that Submariner. And I get it, it's business, but no. it's, it's not really fair play. No, no. And that's basically how it works. So they get their, their steel Rolexes that they want to great market these if they also take some watches that are, well, yeah. less in demand. Yeah. And those watches will be ditched then as well. Is, is it also a, a new reality? The, the limit av uh, availability has limited availability taken the place of limited editions? Because people are growing up now with the idea of uh, mm. things being only I mean, uh, available limited. I and mean, uh, before we move on to that, right? So let's let's first say, so does this waiting game make a watch more worthwhile? Do you think that that, that enhances the experience or it, or really it detracts be, away from it? Because if you have to, with all due respect, if you have to wait for a, like a year on a, on a Rolex uh, Oyster Perpetual 41 millimeter, yeah. it's a watch that is producing huge quantities. Yeah. But if you wait a month, that's fine. Yeah, a That's month fine. is but, fine. But yeah, if, yeah, if yeah, you definitely. have to wait for, a, I don't know, a year on a complicated uh, Lange or a Partek or whatever, I think, you, yeah. okay, that I can deal with. Yeah. yeah. As long as you get the allocation, that yeah, you're not left sure. in the blind. For sure. And I think that was the fun part with the yeah. Speed Tuesday thing. You knew immediately when you got one allocated because you ordered it yeah. online. Yeah. You got a confirmation email. You had to click on uh, yeah. confirm or whatever. Yeah. And it was yours. It yeah. was just yeah. You have to wait. Exactly. And 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 some yeah. some brands like Arkin, for example, uh, followed the approach to on their website. There was a little tracker, and it said parts have been delivered uh, in assembly, quality yeah. control. That's nice. And That's then good. you had a little loading bar, which yeah. was which was quite nice. I purposefully didn't check into it that much because I prefer to kind of cast it aside yeah. and not have to not not but be it's also clever it, because you also nice. uh, keep feeding the uh, the anticipation for sure yeah. for sure yeah. and then so then then moving on to limited editions mm -hmm. um the topic of discussion came up because we were talking about omega who mm -hmm. now uh, famously doesn't really do limited editions no. in favor of limited productions after having done very many limited <laughs> yeah, editions yeah, yeah. In and, the past. And, and i feel that's a pity as a speedmaster collector i i get it that people complain you can wonder if they are really the audience for a Speedmaster, but you can also say, oh, then buy the regular one, and that's it. Don't bo don't be bothered by it. But <laughs> I like Speedmasters. I have all the regular <laughs> versions that I want to have, and then for me, it's fun to just add uh, a variation in the in the in the form yeah. of, in the shape of a limited edition. And I don't have to buy all of them. There are a certain limited edition Speedmasters that I really don't like, but the ones I do like, I I, I try to get. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yeah, but I Omega did. often got criticized for yeah. having these limited editions but that were like the production run of a small uh, yeah, but that uh, was a watch a, that, business. That's a long time ago. So I, I, I now wear this Snoopy. I also have the first Snoopy uh, in, in, in my office. And that had a production run of 5,000 something. Mm. And but five thousand and all sold there. Eh? Try to find one. Is it not, yeah, but not, but yeah, okay, but so still. you also have to look at it uh, in a, like a, with a perspective because Omega is I don't know annual production of what six hundred seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. watches. 
So if it's a limited run of 2000, it's like a, a, a day pr a production of one day in total for them. So it's not that much. But if a brand like Lange Unzöne does a limited edition of 2000 pieces, it's, it's the half of their production. Uh, annual, annual half production. of their annual production. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you have That's to see it in, 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 in yeah. perspective. What I feel is that Omega went from doing a limited edition every month Mm. to doing no limited editions at all. Yeah. And I think that's a pity because as a Speedmaster collector, I like to have some variation uh, on the Moonwatch. So yeah. I don't collect all the other models. I just want Moonwatch models. Yeah. And then I feel it's nice to have the white one now. But for a long time, there was nothing. There was the, the 2020 uh, Snoopy and um, the 321 mm. were basically the only ones that were not limited, but like limited yeah. production or yeah. special yeah. edition. Yeah. And in the past, you could at least choose a few variations that you wanted to have. Yeah. Um, and I think those were, who were very negative, I don't think per se they were Speedmaster collectors because you see the same comment to, to Hublot that they do a limited edition like every single week. Mm. They do. And I think mm. that's, and they do, and that's also their business model and it works for them. Mm. Very the low numbers. Uh, yeah, but the people who are complaining. Blows. They don't have a new blow. So why would a brand listen to those people? No, no, no. no. But so, but we, we know from experience as well that it's not easy to get it right every time. Like we've done limited yeah. editions ourselves as mm -hmm. part of the the Fratello uh, mm -hmm. um, business shop model and, and, yeah. and everything. We've done uh, Nomos, for example, and those were twenty five, I believe. Yeah, two uh, runs. Two runs of twenty five. No, one run is twenty five. The one other was, run was a hundred. Okay, so then, so then one was less limited. So you know, we also adjust because we saw twenty five suddenly it yeah. sold out in yeah. in seconds. I, but I think that had to do with uh, with, uh, with with Nomos as such. Yeah. But yeah. there was also a maximum that Nomos would allocate to us yeah. at yeah. some point. Yeah. But but still, it's it can be tricky to get it right because you you think well twenty five. It's and it, still and it was it, a huge it, risk. Is it a lot? Is it not yeah. a lot? And yeah. then you know that's that's it's it's an interesting thing. So you you could you could see that brands kind of find themselves going down that same yeah. sort of path, Because there, right? there, there was a time when a limited edition was something special, mm -hmm. but mm. the landscape has completely changed because of this limited availability of yeah. uh, 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 regular models. Yeah. So a, a limited... It needs to be special. I, I think if you do a limited edition, it needs to be something special. And today, everything is a limited edition. I saw that, that my wife bought some shampoo or something. And yeah, it yeah, yeah. You see edition. it everywhere. Yeah, you see it with chocolate. <laughs> you see it with... Uh, yeah. And, but, uh, as, but as a collector, or well, not of shampoos, but as a collector... <laughs> <of> yogurts. <laughs> I, I even if you limited, uh, limited edition I yogurts. I, I also collect uh, uh, fountain pens, for example. Mm -hmm. And I do have my Mont Blanc Meister Stucks and Pelican M M eight hundred yeah. M thousand and so on. But if they do a limited edition, oh, it's nice. It's a variation. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to buy it, but it's mm -hmm. nice. It's yeah. out there. Yeah, I think that's the way to to look at it basically. Yeah. And you don't have to. You can criticize. It's fine to criticize things, but yeah. it's also but don't make a fuss out of it. But this is also why, for example, what we've decided to do with our limited editions is instead of making them limited editions, we just make them. Uh, we open a pre order window. Yeah. Yeah. We make it so that anybody can get their yeah. hands on it that wants to, and then it's limited production. And so, it's still so limited, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And you, and we'll and we'll you, only you make as many time as, basically uh, to order. So yeah. you have to, and and so people afterwards can't complain because yeah. with the Nomos uh, to to go back to the Nomos, we had yeah. a bit complaints that it was only twenty five and it's too too small, yada yada yada. But people should also remind that we are small. Well, well, not a small magazine. We are a magazine, but we are not a watch dealer. So we have different kind of mm -hmm. budgets. Yeah. But we had to buy those watches, so there was a yeah. there was a financial risk involved. But we saw the success, and then later yeah. on we did a hundred, and then we also had to buy them. We, then, but then we also more confident. Yeah. Yeah. So for also sometimes for us it's a bit trial and error for sure. here and there, and for I sure. think people understand. Um, but for brands, it's different because they yeah. make they produce the watch. And if it's yeah. only the dial difference, then the cost is also not so but high. But so then, do does does limiting this production, or do you think it's better to do limited editions or to limit the production to make a watch to be honest, worthwhile to it, make a watch? To be honest, more I special. like I like limited editions a bit more because what you see now with the the, the Silf Snoopy Award, it's mm. not a limited edition, it's limited production. They still do quite a few per year, and it's now here for like three and a half years. Right. So at yeah. some point, I also think the novelty is gone. I still like to yeah. watch, and people are still on the wait list. And I, what, from what I've heard from Omega HQ, they will fulfill those wait lists. So mm -hmm. that's all good. It's still in production. Um, 
but at some point also for me the novelty wears off and i have mine now for a few years so i want to see something mm. new i want to have a different watch so i'm happy to see yeah. the wydal one yeah. but it's nice to have if it's limited you know yeah you either get it or you don't get it sometimes i'm a bit uh, well not devastated but disappointed that i didn't get one like Devast- the apollo 11 45th anniversary oh, yeah. the titanium one with the Senna gold mm. i really love that one but i didn't get it and for me that's man oh yeah. Damn, that was a super nice watch. But then, oh, I, I will have a next chance with the next one. So it's also a yeah. little bit of that game involved. So what was fine. the best uh, limited edition you uh, saw uh, recently? Oof. Yeah. Putting us on the spot there. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing uh, that. A limited edition. Yeah. So specifically... Yeah, a like limited, a limited edition. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I don't know. nothing. RJ, yeah, just a, that's the, the thing. The I think I think that that's the problem as well. I is have that, one. Is that uh, what, so? What what is it? Yeah, I, I want to mention the uh, the John Mayer uh, Audemars Piguet, oh, yeah. the okay. perpetual calendar. Yeah. I thought that was uh, was quite a, uh, yeah. a how many stunning they, limited edition. How many are they making of that? I don't know exactly. I will have to. I think a hundred. I think. I think right. it was a hundred. Yeah. I I also I also know it's above two hundred k. But what I, what I think it's a very interesting uh, mm. collaboration. I also mm. like the uh, the Travis Scott uh, one. Mm. It's also interesting to see how uh, Audemars Piguet is is, yeah. is 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 doing that. Is that they they clearly know uh, where their uh, target audience is and what mm. that uh, target audience uh, can spend. What I what I didn't like about the uh, the John Mayer one is so we went to this uh, product president the, the novelties 2024 presentation mm-hmm. of Audemars Piguet there was some there was some stunning stuff and also some less stunning stuff and then also of course they showed us the uh, the the perpetual calendar and uh, said so well now you can buy that so you have that watch that is designed by John Mayer who is mm-hmm. a Veritable watch designer, watch, designer, watch <laughs> yeah, geek. No, no, but he he knows his stuff, right? So yeah. I can I can totally understand the collaboration. So he came up with this watch, and then I was told that he doesn't wear that watch because the watch he wears has gemstones. So you're not buying around. a John Mayer watch. So you're actually not buying. You're buying the John Mayer light watch. Exactly. Yeah. So I I mm. also thought that as a if I were in would mm. be in the market for that, and the people that. AP would tell me, well, this is almost uh, yeah. the John Mayer watch. I also, also find still that want a little it anyway. I think it's probably it's get, it's yes. getting worse if if we look at Blancpain, for example. Mm. They did some quite quite some uh, nice limited editions in last year. Years. They did last year three uh, yeah. limited edition yeah. fifty fathoms, and before that there was the no radiations and so on. I think it becomes a problem if the limited editions are the ones that you really want and you don't want the regular ones. Yeah. yeah. Because they're regular ones. Yeah, now because they introduced the 42 millimeter, which is fine. But no, but that's still that still looks that's that's a, a nice shape and everything. But, but it's, it's still not like it's the no, it, rat no, it's a that, yeah. it's a smaller yeah. version of the yeah. 45. So you still have the the yeah, yeah, very but, stubby uh, lug. So it, yeah. it's still very different from the that's true from the from the limited edition. But like I, the so, Barracuda so I feel and, that th- then you have as a brand, I think you have an issue because if we. Yeah. Go back to Omega, you have the Moon Watch. That's the watch. If you buy one one Speedmaster, yeah. that's the one to buy. And if you enjoy it and you like it, then you can buy the limited editions or special variations. Yeah, that's like, the, you want. that's like the cherry on top. But with Blancpain, you yeah. only go for the limited yeah. editions because yeah. the regular collection is so so. Yeah. yeah. I have my answer, by the way. It oh. was that Breitling Chronomat. I, I had it on in a previous episode, actually. Okay. That was one of my pick for the best watches. I the, just totally the, the one uh, for the UK. Yeah, right? the UK market yeah. uh, with the sort of dark gray uh, subtitles. Yeah, that, that was, was a, a nice great, one. great limited yeah. edition. And it's it's one of those cases where you almost think Oh damn, that would have been a nice production model yeah. because there's it's so good that that you think that's yeah. a shame. I mean, l- limited editions are also a good opportunity to make something that's a little bit out of the norm. That's mm-hmm. a little bit sort of but but I think that that's the problem where you go when people start saying this should be the base model. This should be the model that's available for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the base models and you can't help but think of them as you know, not lesser but but just less desirable in yeah. some way and then at the same time you have brands like uh, seiko who famously make limited edition runs of like three thousand pieces yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then you think well that's is that really ever going to be limited because yeah but they're yeah, so many and then what if they don't sell out super high of course yeah then yeah. they have a uh, yeah well that's what we also that's saw also with a thing, right i really love the what is it air command 2019 mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. And it was still in the windows like two years, three years later. And mm. then I think, man, that's an issue. And that's a nice yeah. one. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And what are, so what are other uh, things, because we, we obviously spoke about wait lists, spoke about limited editions. What are other things that to you make a watch worthwhile that do you make a watch special it can be perhaps waiting to align the purchase with a with a special moment uh wearing it for a special occasion uh or or other tactics perhaps used by uh by by brands that uh that, you know i think the oc- a watch. i think the occasion is uh, occasion is interesting mm. if you want it for a certain occasion um or it's but I th- I feel that um, you need to connect with a watch. You should only mm. buy what you like. And if that yeah. happens to be a limited edition, then yeah, that is what exactly. it is. And for me, a limited edition alone should not be a reason to get a to to get it. Basically, no. Yeah. You need to like the watch. And I also don't want to buy, like I said, every limited edition Speedmaster because they also made some some pretty awful ones. Mm. Yeah. Buy sure. what you like. I think that's the the mantra that we always uh, try to yeah, uh, convey. Buy, but yeah. um, yeah. don't buy the hype. Buy what you like. The hype. The hype can be a, a dangerous exactly. thing because people I, end up I, yeah. with something that then they flip or they yeah. buy it, uh, thinking that there's some sort of like intrinsic value because and it's I, limited. Yeah, and I get and it. That's, that's a FOMO thing. Just like with the the new uh, Moon Swatch, uh, the Snoopy edition, the Mission yeah. to the Moon Phase. We saw it a day in advance. Yeah. I really like it, but I'm not queuing up because no, and my body didn't feel like queuing up that morning. <laughs> you got there and you just... <laughs> but yeah, I will buy it at some other point if it's still there. At least. Yeah. But we but heard uh, mumblings that it was perhaps limited to just that run on that day. Is yeah, that true? We don't know. I don't know yet, right? but I hope okay. not. Um, and no, I can't imagine be, because be you, silly, right? you don't go through the whole process of developing, coming up yeah. with developing yeah. a new <laughs> movement and so on for that. I want to come back on the, uh, the, 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 do you buy it for a special occasion? I, I, I don't think I could, could do that. Why not? If, right? uh, if, okay, so, uh, okay, I have a wedding. Um, I need a, a, a watch for my wedding. So I, I start looking for a watch that should be right to wear on my wedding i i want i want the watch to be leading if if i'm if i i'm not getting married but if i would get married i would just pick a watch from the collection i have that i feel is most appropriate i for me it's always about the watch i either like it yeah uh, or or I or I well, don't, the, and it can be a limited or a non-limited. Well, the, the bad thing was with uh, the Linda Verlin, the three timer that I ordered. I wanted to have it for my wedding. Oh, oh. So, <laughs> so I got married in two thousand nine, uh, yeah. uh, October thirty uh, first. I think October thirty. Oh uh, my god! <laughs> oh my wife is <laughs> moving. So my wife moving is not viewing this. Uh, yeah, it's end of October. It's a leap year. And, uh, yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to have to watch on my wedding day, but it didn't arrive. Yeah, and that was annoying. Yeah, that's super annoying. And yet, I, I wore a uh, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak that I had in my collection. Oh, that's oh, three hundred. You look like horrible. a pauper. And, and <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Today, perhaps. No, but and and then I I, I traded up for uh, the 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 jumbo, the fifteen two two. So I, at some point, I also didn't have that watch anymore. Yeah. And if I look back now on my wedding pictures, that's, is it yeah. ruined? Is, your, is was the day no, ruined? Day is ruined. <laughs> no, it's fine. So it's also not. Can that you still Im- look at the pictures yes. from? Yeah, yeah. And I think in the end, it's also not that not that important what watch you wore. But later oh, okay. on, when I when, I, when uh, <laughs> my daughter was born, I was very I was much more conscious. Hmm. So then I wore a watch that I would be yeah. sure that I was okay. wearing as yeah. from my collection was a Speedmaster and that I could perhaps also give to my wife yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was more thought into it yeah, yeah. and th- so the, the point there is rather rather than the the like a watch's value or or it being worthwhile coming from it being limited or you having to wait or or even the, the concept of like saving up and working your way up mm-hmm. to it it's a bit more like you make it worthwhile for yourself mm-hmm. by adding this value to it by wearing it on a special occasion or or buying it as a memento for a significant moment in your life or something like this you know and then the watch itself can be whatever it is but you know yeah. there's something special about it right like you you said you bought this G-Shock in Tokyo yeah that was, it was Perhaps that yeah it was, was it, it's yeah, a good it was, memento uh, of that trip right so yeah, it was. You, it's uh, it's a little bit more you know, whereas if you buy a watch on a whim or on an impulse, it could perhaps after some time, then you become a flipper, right? You sort mm-hmm. of go, why did I buy this again? I, I liked it for a little while. And mm-hmm. and that's the experience that, that we kind of can luckily mm-hmm. uh, channel through our uh, borrowing of watches for hands-on reviews, right? Oh, a lot of the time you can yeah. be very excited about something when it comes in and you wear it and you enjoy it. And then you have that sort of closure at the end where it has to go back to the brand. And you sort of think, hey, well, you know, in the end, I didn't have to buy that. It was, it was, I was very excited about it. And, and sometimes it, it can help us sort of, you know, make the difference between 
yeah. the the value of it and, yeah. and what what whether it is actually yeah. for you or not, right? It's it's worth p- being able to separate those things. Piaget Polo seventy nine. That's my pick. Mm. That's also oh for limited. limited. Yeah. yeah, yeah, eighty yeah. pieces. Yeah, that's a proper limited edition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope they'll sell them all, but uh, yeah, I, they probably will. I'm sure yeah, they will. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. I heard people even saying that the vintage ones now are like a hot commodity. Like yeah. everybody's yeah. just uh, <laughs> like you couldn't have sold them, and now they're they're the hottest thing uh, on the yeah. pre-owned market. So yeah. it's uh, it's an interesting but thing. Yeah. Again, I also would like to Polo 79 if it's not a limited edition. So for me, it's mm. not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It can be nice, and to be honest, again, I rather would. If this uh, Snoopy would be limited edition, I mm-hmm. think it would be nicer for me because then there would be another one sooner, something yeah. to looking to look forward to. Yeah, 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 yeah uh, true. But I also believe this was a little bit of a game changer for Omega because they stopped making limited editions in 2019, and um, in 2020 they came with 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 yeah. this. Yeah. And since then, they didn't do limited editions anymore. Yeah. So what we found out here today is that the ideal watch is one that's a limited edition that you have to wait for. Yeah. And you wear it on a special event. Exactly. No, something like that. <laughs> no, but it's it's true that it's an interesting topic yeah. because there's certain factors that come into play that that can help make a watch uh, feel more special, at least. And uh, and clearly, it's something that uh, that moves uh, people to 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 make a purchase. So it's uh, yeah. Just uh, throwing some thoughts out there yeah. today, so I think our audience will uh, also be keen to chime in in the in the comments. And uh, speaking of comments, speaking we have the comment of, of the com- week. Comment of yeah. the week. You see what I did there? Uh, we have the comment <laughs> of the week, which comes from T.J. Duncan, who says, "This conversation is too big. It should have been forty millimeters." Nice. So yeah, that's uh, shout out to TJ Duncan yeah. for, for some <laughs> words of wisdom. <laughs> All right, I totally well, disagree with the guy because yeah, it's, no, it's a thirty nine point five oh, millimeters. Three, okay, <laughs> well, there's a sweet spot for every conversation, <laughs> right? Okay, perfect. Well, thanks a lot, guys, uh, for discussing the topic this week. And uh, as always, we hand it off to our audience. Uh, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and as always, tune in next week for another episode of Fortello Talks. See you then.